Today is Palm Sunday. The crowds cheered and shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved palm branches and spread their garments out on the road as Jesus entered Jerusalem. The whole city joined in to give Jesus a hero's welcome, a royal reception. But the cheers were shallow and the celebration was short-lived. For in the background, the chief priests, the scribes and Pharisees, the Sadducees and Herodians were green with envy and red with anger. And they set their traps with tricky words and bought their spy with 30 coins and prepared to kill the Son of God. Today is Palm Sunday, a day of paradox. Today, the king rode to the capital on a lowly colt. Today, the cheers briefly held back the drumbeats of doom. Today, only the Christ candle burns through our service. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you here this morning. And it's good to have you folks at home or wherever you are watching. Uh, just to let you know, we have about 20, 25 people here. We have room for more. Um, and so we want to encourage you, as you feel safe, to join us in worship. Um, there's nothing that can replace being in person with your church family and in the church building. So we uh, look forward to having more of you join us. As, we, uh, as you feel safe to, to do so. And uh, welcome to Holy Week. I just want to have a, a couple of announcements. We are planning to participate in Treasure Day, so there's an announcement uh, in the bulletin about information about that. Uh, if you could please get your Treasure Day donations in as soon as possible to help with the pricing. Um, we have a great opportunity through our denomination in their offering one great hour of sharing. And uh, if you're looking for ways to help the hungry, to help those recovering from disaster, uh, the one great hour of sharing contributes to those kinds of needs around the world. And uh, it's, it's great to be a part of a, a church like the Presbyterian Church USA that helps people in so many different places. Uh, and in so many different ways. And the one great hour of sharing is, is the way they do that. So please consider uh, giving to that. Especially, you know, we've had people struggle and suffering and not having enough money to pay bills or get food. You know, we've seen people in long lines waiting for food. And uh, I remember seeing an article on TV about a person who before COVID started, she volunteered at a food pantry where they gave away food. And then the, the COVID virus came and she ended up being one of the persons who needed to go there to get food because her resources were gone. Uh, so the one great hour of sharing is, is a, a way for us to help people who are in need, and uh, I would encourage you to give uh, as you are able. I also uh, want to thank you for those of you who brought food for the local food pantry, Bread of Life. Uh, we had a basket full of food in the Narthex, so thanks so much, uh, and please consider donating in that way as well. Um, just a reminder, Easter bulbs can be uh, donated, and there's an announcement in your bulletin about that. And our Holy Week schedule this week, uh, Monday, Thursday, we will be having a service at 7 p.m. at Covenant. And please come and join us for in-person worship. We will be having communion on Monday, Thursday, this Thursday at 7 p.m. We will also be live streaming that. Good Friday, we will have a service here at 7 p.m. Please join us for in-person worship on Good Friday. Uh, how many of you remember the day when all the businesses closed at noon on Good Friday? How many of you were still around when that happened? 
And where did people go at noon on Friday? The churches were packed. Remember those days? I remember uh, the ministerium of Springfield, Delaware County. We were having a three-hour service, and there was not enough room for people to come in who were coming in at, say, 1 or 2 p.m., because there was no seats available in the large Methodist sanctuary in Springfield, which could seat, I don't know, it's four or 500 people. <laughs> so let's start that tradition again. Let's come out on these holy days of Holy Week and worship together uh, and ponder the passion of Christ. Um, we will also be having sunrise service at Lakeview Memorial Park. I think it's the 90th year that they will be having a service there. One of the longest consecutive sunrise services anywhere in Philadelphia area. Uh, and so that is at 6.30 a.m. Uh, sunrise service, April 4th. So you're welcome to join us for that. And then we will be having our Easter service here at 11 a.m. So that's our schedule for Holy Week. I hope you will set aside time this week to reflect on Christ's passion. And this morning, I just want to encourage us. Presbyterians are very intellectual. We tend to live our faith a lot of times uh, from our thinking, from our head, from our rationale. But today, I'd like you to consider another way of, of living out your faith. And that is through the feeling, through the gut, through intuition. Try to get in touch with your heart today as you worship. And what is God's spirit trying to tell you? Or what is God's spirit trying to help you experience during this time of worship? Let's get out of our head today and get into our heart and our soul and our gut and feel the presence of God as we worship together. Thanks so much for that, Val. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week 
and gather at your house of prayer. Turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made with hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen. And now the proclamation of the entrance into Jerusalem. Now listen to God's word as if you're hearing it for the first time. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing? Untying the colt. They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Amen.
Thank you so much, Val. Now we're going to be reading quite a bit of scripture here, and uh, that's for a reason. Um, Palm Sunday is for us to reflect on the entire passion narrative. So we want to hear all of the, the narrative and allow it to sink in at the beginning of Holy Week. And so the prayer for illumination is as follows. Let us pray together. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty. Quiet within us, every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. The first reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Mark chapter 14, 1 through 15. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more, for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. 
but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Well, as I was uh, preparing the liturgy for today, using our official Book of Common Worship, I noticed that at the time where the sermon was, it also gave this option of silent reflection or a sermon. And all the years that I've been preparing Palm Sunday services, I never noticed that this was in there. And I thought, what a very interesting approach for Palm Sunday, a silent reflection on the scripture with possibly no sermon. So that's what we're going to do now. We are going to pause and reflect on what you have just heard. So it may be helpful for you to close your eyes. We're going to spend almost two minutes in silent reflection. But what I would encourage you to do is to keep your mind quiet and see if the Spirit wants to bring an experience or a feeling or a teaching to you. So ask yourself, what may God be wanting to say to me in this moment from hearing the passion narrative? So let us spend a moment and reflect silently on Christ's passion.
Amen. And what I would like to do now is to have you express in one word what might be summarized by your reflection on Christ's passion. So in just one word, what would you say as your response to the passion? You can remain right where you are and just say the word out loud when it comes to you. Thank you for those responses. Indeed, there's, there's many things that we can learn from, from this week. The 12 months that we have been through, maybe one of the important things we should remember is that Jesus has taught us through his passion that we need not fear death. And we need to hear that, don't we? We need not fear death. And we can look to him as an example of how we do that. There's so many things that come up as we read the Passion. Just as we were reading it again now, I remembered how Jesus had knowledge of many things that the Spirit taught him. Right? He somehow knew that there was a donkey and that it was going to be okay for the disciples to go get it. Now the only way he knew that is from God giving him that information. And the boy carrying the water jug that would lead them to the upper room how did he know that? The Spirit taught him and told him. Now, if you read the rest of the story and the growth of the church in Acts, you'll see that this kind of teaching and knowledge is not reserved for Jesus alone, but is given to the church. And there are times perhaps where you have even experienced that you were given knowledge of things you didn't know and could not know, but you needed in order for the future to unfold according to God's timing. And what's amazing is that this can happen more and more as you grow spiritually. The Spirit will teach you wisdom and deep secrets of God, it says in 1 Corinthians. I just had a dream a couple of months ago. And uh, it was one of those dreams you remember. And about six weeks after that dream, part of that dream actually happened to me while I was on vacation. And as soon as we were at the location, I was like, this is exactly what was in my dream six weeks ago. See, in your dream state, you're actually closer in some ways to God communicating with you than you are in your waking state. Because in our waking state, we typically are consumed with thoughts and anxiety and stress and the body and the world. We're so busy, we don't have time to listen to the Spirit tell us things. 
There's so much that we can learn through the passion narrative. And thank you for sharing those words of reflection. They're all so important. Gratitude, compassion, all those words you shared. So this week, this Holy Week, this Good Friday, There's a couple sermons on why we call Friday Good Friday, which is an interesting title that the church has given the death of Jesus, isn't it? I hope you will reflect on what Jesus has done for us and with us during this Holy Week. Amen. Thanks, that was a perfect hymn to help us reflect on, on the passion, wasn't it? And thanks so much, Val. We're going to close with um, a prayer for this day and parts of the solemn approaches of the cross. I uh, wanted to remind you to look at your uh, list of folks, our church family, to pray for. Um, and if you could add... Sheila McMenamin's father, who is uh, now on hospice care, please pray for him. And uh, please take a note and, and pray for these folks who are in need of God's healing, grace, and mercy. Let's pray together. Our Redeemer suffered death, was buried, and rose again for our sake. With love, let us adore him, aware of our needs. Christ, our teacher, for us you were obedient even to death. Teach us 
to obey God's will in all things. Christ, our life, by dying on the cross, he destroyed the power of evil and death. Enable us to die with you and to rise with you in glory. Christ, our strength, you were despised and humiliated as a condemned criminal. Teach us the humility by which you save the world. Christ, our salvation, you gave your life out of love for us. Help us to love one another. Christ our Savior, on the cross you embraced all time with your outstretched arms. Gather all the scattered children of God into your realm. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, grant us peace. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Kyrie eleison. Eternal God, as we are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, so give us the grace of repentance that we may pass through the grave with him and be born again to eternal life. For he is the one who was crucified, dead and buried, and rose again for us. Jesus our Savior. Amen. May the love of God the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.